jumping into functions and seeing ADBE versus Graxpert. Welcome to SETI Astro. All right, moving on to functions. All functions with the exception of one actually can be found just under the, the functions menu. They're also on the functions toolbar right here. The only one that is on the toolbar that's not anywhere else is copy slot. So that'll be the first one we go over. This is a way to copy any image slot to any other slot or any mask slot to any other slot, including other image and masks. So if you have a mask that you want to manipulate, you need to copy it up into an image slot, then you can do curves and blemish blaster and frequency separation or anything else you want on it. And then you can copy it back down to a mask slot. So I just have a, an image here in slot zero and you'd see copy slot. You can select your source type image or mask. We're going to go from slot zero and the target type, you could send it to either an image or a mask slot. We'll just put it like down in, I don't know, slot, slot three. When it's done, it'll say it's uh, successfully in that slot. And now you can see the slot has a, a little blue square around it to show you that there's something in there. So here's slot two with nothing. And here's slot three with our, with our image again. The next function is going to be histogram. I'm going to click histogram and it calculates the histogram while it opens. And you can see now the, the histogram of the image. So for color images, it's going to have R, G, and B. For mono, it's just going to have a K value. And you can see the minimums, the maximums, the median value, and the standard deviation for all of them. You can also toggle the x-axis to be a log scale or a linear scale. So here's the, the log scale. There is a, a zoom. If you want to like zoom in to the histogram and, and kind of look around. And it is also relatively live. So histogram will keep recalculating based on whatever the active image is. So if I do something and we'll get to this, but if I like remove the pedestal, now you can see they, they all lined up and because it set all the minimums here. You can see all the minimums went to zero. So, you know, if you like apply statistical stretch or apply a curve, things of that nature, the histogram will, will update itself. Moving on to crop. There's an auto stretch and that auto stretch is going to be very aggressive. So you can see things like stacking artifacts um, and other aberrations you want to remove. Here, I'll just click it so you can see. You can see how, how aggressive it is. You can click and drag and draw your crop rectangle. I did make the handles really big so you could see those easier than the, than the line of the crop rectangle itself. You can click and drag the any of the handles to resize it. So if you just want like to crop way up by this little satellite galaxy, you can. And also if you shift click and drag on the corners, you can rotate your crop rectangle in order to, you know, a, a, adjust the crop how you want. And then obviously you can, you can apply the crop or you could batch crop all the slots. So that's going to be great if you have loaded like LRGB from a mono image and you want to crop them all exactly the same, right? So you can batch crop all the slots. The other thing you can do too is if you crop an image and you open up the next image, if you just click load previous crop, it's going to put that rectangle back up exactly as you had it the last time you used crop. So those are just some, some great ways to crop your image, get rid of the stacking artifacts, get rid of any blemishes on the edge of your image. And again, uh, with being able to rotate, that should help you with framing as well. Moving on to my automatic background extraction. In PixInsight, I call it ADBE. You have an image off to the left. You have the number of sample points, the poly degree, the RBF smoothness, Show gradient, you could save that gradient to any of the slots. The auto stretch again is going to be that very aggressive auto stretch so you can see where the gradient is, maybe some areas you want to exclude, and then the process button. Now for those uh, poly degrees, 
I, I do want to touch on it. So poly degree one is a linear gradient. Now these are all two dimensional objects. So a linear gradient is, it's like a lightning to darkening across the image, right? It's, it's, it's like it, well, the, the top example here, right? It's, it's, it's a linear straight line of lightning to darkening. Poly degree two is a quadratic and that's going to be like venetting. It's going to look exactly like this. It may not be the brightest point centered in the middle, right? It could be anywhere, but that's what a quadratic or poly degree two looks like. And then as you get higher and higher degrees, uh, cubic starts getting lobes where you have two bright points and a, and a dark patch, like a saddle running through it. So that's just to keep in mind when you're using ABE, what those different numbers mean. The other thing that ABE does is it splits the image up into quadrants. And then in each quadrant, it's going to exclude placing any sample points in the brightest 50% of them, because that could be an area of signal. And then when it places the other sample points in the rest of the area, it uses something called gradient descent uh, to adjust the position of those sample points. So uh, as you're looking at the, the two dimensional surface of your image, brighter points in this are going to be higher, like a hill, and darker points are gonna be uh, bluer and further down, like, like a valley. So as it places the sample points across the image, if it lands near a star or on an area of high signal, it's going to adjust the sample point down and down and down and down until it finds a little valley. And that's where it's going to uh, stop and use that as a sample point. The idea being that signal, star halos, things like that aren't true background and you don't want a sample point in there, right? So it, it's going to try to find the, the dimmest portions of the image in order to create the, the true background in that respective area, right? These are all local minima and that's also important uh, because there is going to be gradient. That's also why we do the poly degree gradient removal as well. So that actually gets done first. So it's going to remove the either the linear gradient or the quadratic venetting gradient such that gradient descent can then work on the mostly flat image after that point. So the bulk of the work actually gets done just with the normal poly degree gradient, gradient removal. And then after that, it uses sample points following gradient descent to find the positions throughout the image to uh, calculate the RBF background from. So this would be a good, good image to demonstrate uh, ABE gradient removal on. I have like a red to green cast. I have Andromeda, which is huge right in the middle here. So I'm gonna click ABE. I'm gonna leave it a poly degree two. Uh, the number of sample points, normally 100 is good. RBF smoothness. Now, this is if you're familiar with like Graxpert, it's it's going to be a comparable kind of a, a smoothness feel. So a point one would be a very fine gradient removal where uh, any little bump or squiggle in the in the brightness of the sample point is going to translate to actually trying to get it removed. Um, so I'm going to set this to one. We want to see the gradient. Let's put that in slot two. Again, there's the auto stretch. And now I'm going to draw a big exclusion right around Andromeda here. And I'm also going to do one around the satellite galaxy. Now what's nice about the exclusion area in ABE is it's also used when developing the poly, the poly degree gradient as well. So unlike other automatic background extractions with a poly degree gradient removal process. Um, mine will actually exclude all this from the calculation of the, the, like the degree two polynomial gradient, which is, which is really important. So I'm just going to click process. It has to do some normalization and then it's going to do the poly gradient removal first. Now it's doing the RBF gradient removal. Then it has to do some denormalizing and it says the gradient removal was uh, completed successfully. And now here's our image with, with no gradient. And we could look at the extracted gradient. 
there there it was in the background and you can toggle the auto stretch to just give it more oomph to see what's happening and here's our image again with without any gradient on it i also made a copy of the original here in slot one because the next function we're going to do is uh, gradient removal with Graxpert. So I'm going to click uh, the Graxpert button here. Again, you could enter the smoothing. I'll go back to a 1 and just click OK. Be sure you have uh, Graxpert set up correctly in your preferences. Graxpert also doesn't emit um, any signal to display here. So it'll just um, disappear when it's done. And it'll say gradient removed successfully. So now here's the image with Graxpert removal. And we can compare the two. Here's with my ABE with gradient descent and RBF modeling. And there's uh, Graxpert with its AI. You could tell it took a, a huge chunk of signal out of the middle here. So I always recommend using ABE for gradient removal. It's, uh, in my opinion, a better algorithm and a better way to do gradient removal. It's, it's just like using Graxpert manually in their RBF mode, manually placing a bunch of points, except in my process, it you know utilizing gradient descent. It's all algorithmically done to find your best, uh, your best points and remove the gradient correctly. But Graxpert gradient removal isn't there if you are so inclined to use it. Please comment, like, and subscribe.